from the Catholic Underground. Today on the show, this week, forget climate change. How about just cheap electricity? We'll have the latest on the new oblations from the Cult of Mac. Our We Pack the Bus for Camp, Chant Camp. Our picks of the week, so much more. Right now, it's time for the Catholic Underground, and it starts... Fancy seeing you here. It's time for the Catholic Underground. We're your weekly Catholic guide to the digital continent. It's episode number 266. I, I am Father Chris Decker. If you are listening live, you can join us at catholicunderground.tv and get your chat on with us. Joining me this week, we've got Father Ryan Humphreys. He's the rector of the Minor Basilica of the Immaculate Conception in historic Natchitoches, Louisiana, fresh from his Pentecost Mass tour. Hello, Father. Hello, world. Also, uh, the incoming campus minister at St. Michael the Archangel High School in Baton Rouge, our fully licensed faith ninja, Kathleen Lee, joins us. Hello, Kathleen. Hello, everyone. Yay. Yep. (laughs) And Jeff Blackwell is the tech director of the CU. He is the commandant of the Jeff Star One Near Earth Orbit Satellite. Hello, Jeff. Hello, and also Kathleen's literally biggest fan. Uh (laughs) For some reason, I was going to introduce you as Jeffula. Yeah, that works. Uh, Anyway, Mary Kate Taylor. Yes, Mary Mary Kate Taylor's back, the disembodied disembodied video editor uh, of the live stream. We've also got got Ed. Yes. We've also got Ed sitting in, and Tim. Tim is our seminarian, and one day you may, if you're really good and you clap your hands for him, he might show up. So there you go. Tim is not a rabbit. He is not a rabbit. He is, in fact, a real person. Therefore, he's harmless. He is is quite harmless. Mostly. Mostly. Harmless, yeah. So no matter where you stand on climate change, coal, solar, hydroelectric, or or hamster power, which is Kathleen's preferred method. That's true. Everyone agrees that uh, it would be just super if electricity could be produced cheaply, quietly, and abundantly with as few raw ingredients as possible. Father Ryan, I like this idea of uh, of, of super cheap, quiet electricity. It reminds me of Steve Jobs, uh, the, the, the former head of Apple, mm-hmm. who, if he could have had, you know, a computer work without electricity, he would have, because he never wanted fans in anything. Right. He, he wanted it to be beautiful and elegant, and of course, moving hot air across, you know, circuit boards is no. not elegant or no, beautiful. ever. And so they'd look at him and they'd say, uh, well, we can't do it without a fan, uh, because, you know, circuitry generates heat. And it turns out we do need power to power our MacBooks, Father. And so, so what do we what do we do with uh, with the notion of of cheap, quiet, efficient, abundant electricity? Well, if you stop and think about it, solar is quiet, but yeah. it's extremely expensive to produce. It's got a very very low efficiency, and the resultant electricity is not abundant. You know, if the, if the sun, you know. Has a, you have a couple of bad days of storms, there's no more electricity. Yeah. Hydroelectric makes a lot of power, but it's very expensive and it's extremely loud and it's dangerous. You know, I mean, if you have to yeah. dam things up, there's lots of problems. Coal and gas are abundant. They're relatively cheap, but they produce lots of, they require lots of raw materials. And of course they produce lots of pollution. Yeah. And then you have nuclear or nuclear, <laughs> uh, which is abundant and quiet. But it's not cheap, and it produces lots of nasty waste. And, of course, if it explodes, bad things happen. That's a bit of a problem, actually. Yeah. <laughs> As it turns <laughs> out, it's not good. So um, there are actually a few people who are trying now to say, well, what about wind? Mm-hmm. Can we make wind work? Because wind, generally speaking, is quiet. Yep. And it, But the problem is it doesn't produce much power. It's extremely expensive. It's very inefficient. And now you have whole flocks of birds running into giant propellers, all manatee-like. And, <laughs> and, you know, that's just not good. And also, who wants to see a bunch of, you know, of giant propellers in the backyard? Well, yeah. unsurprisingly, a, a, uh, a company from the, the northern part of Europe, and they've not made crystal clear exactly where they're from, have de- developed this thing that is a wind turbine that makes basically a combination. So it's not like a big propeller. It's like a funnel, and it grabs the wind, and it spins on very, very little wind, and it moves on an articulated mount, and it's light. So you're talking like five, six grand, and you put (laughs) one in your house, or you put one on your house, and the idea is they want to have two or three of these things could power your entire house. Wow. And and so it works really well with very, very little wind. It's as low as five kilometers per hour, which is 
very, very little wind. It can produce energy. And these things are small. You know, you're talking three, four feet across, not 500 yards. Yeah. And so you really can mount it to the top of your house. What's more, if a bird runs into it, he's just going to be wildly confused. He's not really going to, you know, <laughs> die or be cut into pieces. I just went so, through a wormhole. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so you have here a really remarkable idea coming from, from these people who were just trying to come up with something that's cheap. And of course, it fits all of our categories. It is cheap. It is quiet. It's abundant. It uses basically no raw ingredients. And uh, it, it does something that's that's kind of been missing, which is make wind something reasonable for the local home. <laughs> basically, it's just air. <laughs> yeah. So so I'm interested. So how big are these things? Five, six feet across. Five to six feet across. So it's basically like a solid wind sock. Give or take. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it actually it's beautiful because, you know, those ridiculous things that hang and spin in all the different directions mm -hmm. and they yeah. they make the little little bird or the flower that all men hate, but everybody on Pinterest thinks is awesome. Jeez. Those, it looks exactly like that because once it starts spinning, it's this very, very beautiful thing. And you could imagine painted versions of these coming out that really were quite beautiful. And so it's kind of like an art form that, that will actually hold up to hurricane speed winds and produce power. Yeah. So you could imagine if the hurricane comes, you don't need the natural gas generator because the fan's just going to, the, the generator is going to actually you get more power during a hurricane than less, rather than less. Yeah, if uh, if you happen to be watching on uh, on the video feed, we'll bring up um, uh, the the camera here or the the computer, and you can see. Um, let me see if I can describe these things to you. They they come in many colors, and it's it looks like a, a pinwheel, kind of like a pinwheel would look like a, like a kid would have, you know. Um, and uh, it's it's a concentric pinwheel, and it looks like there's a turbine on the end of what is the pinwheel. So I could see how the, the air would just kind of catch it and then turn around. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of a cross-section of a seashell. It know? does. It looks like the cross-section of a seashell. And they're, they're uh, uh, assuming the scale is, is here. Um, uh, in fact, you can see on YouTube there's a little field test of them. They aren't very big at all. So, so that's, that's something. And they're working at the end of the video. They hint that they're doing a mini version as well that may only be a foot and a half, two feet across. Oh, okay. Well... That's really but, interesting. Yeah, I mean, and, and you're talking about the cost for the for the standard one at fifty four hundred dollars. Yeah, so this is this is not a bank breaker, if you want to say go off the grid. No, yeah. I mean it's it's a very reasonable investment. I mean, and, and if it if it's the kind of thing that actually shows some value, I'd get four or five of them and put it in my school. I mm -hmm. mean, for fifty grand, mm -hmm. that's uh that's not a bad investment to yeah. uh to cut down. I mean, because if you think like like here in in Louisiana, the wind blows all year long. And it's so expensive to heat and cool in the summertime. This kind of thing would be a gigantic win for me. And yeah. I couldn't put it on my historic buildings. But I mean, gosh, five or six thousand dollars, you put 30 or 40 grand into it. Yeah. And if you could turn your electric bill down, I mean, my electric bill for my campus is almost twenty five hundred dollars a month. Sure. Yeah. Mine you know, as well. So if I could reduce that by half or two thirds, that's no brainer. Now, yeah. I've thought about solar for that for that uh, matter for uh, a, a rural parish, especially since we're. You know, we're near the river, and and there are no trees or anything, so we're yeah. always facing the sun. But that that's a that's a fifty or sixty grand project, and I don't know if you get as much wattage as you might be able to with a couple of these wind powered things. Well, and the other thing that gets me excited about this is, and you had this experience when you were down in, uh, I believe, is Haiti. Yeah. Where what if you could have, or what if you we could donate? We buy four or five of these, and we'll send one or two off to a mission church. Right. Or a mission hospital yeah. in somewhere in Africa that where there's no there's no grid to hook up to. Right. Three or four of these things could make a gigantic difference. Charging cell phones, making it possible to to get more sanitary conditions. I mean, that's that's a huge win mm -hmm. for uh, for a lot of people. And and this is a, a giant way of being able to help mission territory too. It could become a, a really important part of the future. Kathleen, you're an itinerant missionary. Yes. So what do you think of this idea? Um, I think it's great. You know, I think I've I've been to Africa where they're using um is it solar no it's is it a wind turbine uh, like the big propeller ethanol 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 ethanol, ethanol. Yes. yeah 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 they're using that and all over the world they're having to find um alternative ways to provide energy to provide power yeah um, I think it's a great idea and if, if you can provide it cheaper um and more reliable mm -hmm. more reliably mm -hmm. um, I say go for it and the thing about it is really once you buy the thing mm -hmm. it's free <laughs> you know, yeah. you might have to buy uh, you might have to buy batteries, you know, periodically because batteries 
unless you buy those batteries that have the water in them and that's how they charge you know you you just put the water yeah, yeah. uh it really sounds like a it could be a really revolutionary thing especially as you say uh, father for for the emerging world jeff you're you're on board with this i bet yeah uh, the thing that i don't know uh, a lot about is like you said capturing the wind and generating the power is fine but uh, where is that energy stored yeah um how how often do you know does it have to be charged how I many do you have to have a, a, a professional electrician install um a, if it's a, in the a eu you probably or, will yeah well and they've answered some of these questions on the website the um the in terms of of where do you store it if you are in the united states the law requires that the power company buy back the electricity you produce if you go the other way. Go so you don't side. actually have to yeah. store. It's just going to send it back to the big capacitors that the, the power company is running. Fascinating. So if you're going to do this for your lake house, then you would have to buy batteries. But those are already – they're already out there because the solar companies and stuff like that have been working on these batteries ah, for a good long gotcha. while. Gotcha. That's, that is very yeah. sweet. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> And, and, uh, and the other uh, the other part of your your question there, if I, I just just lost my brain, um, you were asking about, uh, about the batteries, and you asked about something else. Oh, uh, as far as the installation, do you need a? Uh, yes, you do have to have a professional install these, and it, down the road it seems like they may not want to, but it's just like a natural gas generator. You need somebody who who is legally licensed to handle high electricity. Yeah, because right. it does. It brings in actual voltage. Yeah. I bet it does. Yeah. Uh, in, a, in a slightly unrelated thing, uh, Father, have you read this uh, this national report report from the scientific research facility in Wyoming that um, that suggests that that solar panels not only convert the sun's energy into usable energy, but that they are also draining the sun of its own energy? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, well. Uh, it is. I mean, they're, they're, they can't drain it. Like there's no there's no consistent stream. But right. the sun is burning itself out. Exactly. I mean, that's what that's, it does. Right. That's what a sun does. So, <laughs> I just thought this was so funny that you know that th this group uh, spent a, a, probably a good deal of money and resources. Uh, the Wyoming Institute of Technology. Oh, okay. Wow. That's a think tank in uh, Cheyenne, and that's basically put put into layman's terms. According to the website on the National Report, the solar panels capture the sun's energy but pull on the sun over time, forcing more energy to be released than the sun is actually producing. Oh, yeah. Imagine That's... a water... And so here's, here's the image, okay? <laughs> Imagine a waterfall dumping water, but you aren't catching the water in buckets, but rather sucking it in with a vacuum cleaner. Eventually, you're going to suck in so much water that you drain the river above that waterfall completely. Aha, uh -huh. yeah. That <laughs> are they trying to bring Hitler back too? I mean, what are the kind of ridiculous <laughs> nonsense they they I mean, planned? It just I mean, seems it just seems a little nonsensical because we know that the sun is a giant ball of gas, and in a couple of billion years, so are they saying that if we keep using solar energy, the sun's going to be done in about fifteen? It's throwing its energy out. That's the whole. Well, <laughs> I know and, it's and the analogy with us. the river is comically absurd. The river's not <laughs> duct taped together. It's a bunch of individual water molecules. I know. I mean, there's the vaguest sense of water has surface tension so that when you pour, you know, you can you can actually end up having to pull the pitcher away slightly. But, I mean, that's not the same thing as sucking it out of the pitcher. You know? know. Are you sure this study was not done in Colorado or something? Was this done by a fraternity? <laughs> was this done after the, the luau party or that's something? Right. I don't, oh, I'm, my. Just, I'm just saying that's well, we're just reporting what's uh, been reported to <laughs> us. Absolutely. <laughs> so we'll put that in the show notes for you to make uh, your own choice about. Uh, but I, I read it and I said, they've, they've, "You've got to be kidding! You've, you've got, of course, of course, we're we're, uh, but I don't think that we're hastening the burning out of the sun. It's freely no. giving us its energy as God created it. That doesn't mm. really <laughs> happen. <laughs> this is not a thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So." Um, uh, hopefully, um, we, we certainly recognize the, the need to uh, to use the resources on our planet well. That's that's an important thing. Pope yeah. Benedict talked about it. Pope Francis talked about it, and um, and certainly this is one of those ways to do it. Whether it's solar, whether it's wind, that's really kind of neat. So uh, so, however you get the Catholic underground, we hope there's enough power for you to do it. You are listening to The Catholic Underground. We are online, if you can imagine, at catholicunderground.tv. I am Father Chris Decker. Joining us via Skype, Father Ryan Humphreys. you got Jeff Blackwell in the, uh, the audio cave there. Yeah. 
Kathleen Lee sits to my left, your right, and uh, Mary Kate Taylor, the unseen. But yet, what's that? Oh, it's Tim running the board right now. Ooh. Oh, he's doing the punching. Now. Tim, you your style is very much like Mary Kate. <laughs> <laughs> he is Tim. <laughs> yes, some call him Tim. Yeah. You, I, you know, to I gotta that. say, I love the hard rock elevator music for the transition. I know Jeff did; it's, it's a great job. Because every time I feel like I'm sitting, there, I'm just kind of like, "Yeah, this is awesome." <laughs> right. I'm, I'm just buying in right now. It's great. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> oh, that's nice. The first floor is a I'm casino, isn't it? Yeah. We, t- uh, we take requests too. That's right. That's right. There you go. <laughs> Stairway. <laughs> Freebird. Uh, Freebird. Right. <laughs> yikes. <laughs> so, Father Ryan, we knew this day would come. Um, yeah, it, it started with OS 10 Mavericks and a complete renaming of of all of the OS 10s. They were running out of Jungle Cats, I guess. Uh, yeah, and so and so they uh, they started naming the new OS 10 uh, integrations after places in California. Basically, oh. yeah, arbitrary places vaguely associated with California. That's right. I don't know. Yeah. So anyway, we, now we have OS 10 Yosemite. Yep. Yep. Like like Sam. Varmint <laughs> and I O iOS eight. Right, uh, and iOS eight is here. Yeah. Now we have to remember this is the WWDC, the Worldwide Developers Conference. I think so Father this Ryan, is, we need to institute a level twelve geek alert for this. Yes. Level twelve geek alert. Just so you know, there may be a time in which we geek out and you might want to go get something from the kitchen to eat. Continue. That's right. This is this is a watermelon splash zone. <laughs> um the, the the Worldwide Developers Conference is meant for people who are not end users, but people who are writing the apps. And so they, they explained a lot of new features coming out from OS X, a lot of new features coming out from iOS, but they explained them specifically for the people who are going to write apps. So this is not all the features. Right. This is just the features that are for people, you know, who are app writers, me and 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 Father Michael Earthman's another one, and people who are selling apps for phone and I. Now, and there's a lot of extremely exciting news. I'm going to try to keep it, though, to something very simple. There's a lot of, uh, on the OS X side, that's the, the, the desktop and laptop operating system, lots of interface tweaks. Uh, they've improved all the stock software. But the really big deal is what they're calling, um, co- well, it's a continuity app. I forget exactly the name they're using for it. But it's kind of like in Chrome right now, Father. You know, if I'm on Chrome on my, my computer and I'm searching for, you know, Bob's Bakery, yeah. you know, in Boston, and I pick up my phone, I walk away and I take my phone with me and I go, oh, I forgot to write down the address. I can, on my iPhone, hit Chrome and say, give me the page that was, that was open on my desktop computer and it'll pop straight up. And it, it just yeah, knows what's going on. It synchronizes them. Yeah, that's, and that's can, called a handoff. Handoff is the name yeah. for it. And so right now, that's the big feature. They're building that into iOS and iPhone now, or, and, and OS X. Now, every TV show has pretended this has been the case since day one. Mm-hmm. You have somebody who swipes from their iPad. Magically, it goes up on some big 55-inch touchscreen. That's never been the case. No. But now it is. This so is the minority sim- report thing. Right, you know where uh-huh. Tom Cruise uh, just kind of throws his file ah, from yeah. one tablet yeah. to a wall. The yeah. cat, you you seen that? I've seen it because it has Colin Farrell in it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Of course, mm-hmm. that was what we we're thinking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So, so that's a big deal. But as the as, as the last several years have shown us, what Apple is really worried about now is getting iOS where it needs to go. And I'll admit to you up front, the ad that the additions that they're proposing actually cover all of my bases of reasons I left iPhone. Really? So, so I so may what are some very well find myself going back to iPhone mm-hmm. uh, when my contract comes up because Ooh. this is a big deal. Yeah. Biggest number one thing on the Ryan Humphreys list of this has got to get fixed, keyboards. Yeah. If you have an iPhone, if you have a, an Android device and you can use the swipe, it's amazing. Yes. And the idea that you'd have to do this little nonsense... That goes away. And so they are now allowing third-party developers to introduce keyboards already. My favorite keyboards, the top three for me, are already signed up and said they're going to be introducing their keyboards. Lovely. Great news. Um, also, the continuity thing we talked about before is a big, giant deal, especially if you have Apple computers and you have Apple phones and you have an iPad. Gigantic. Yeah. Um, the, they also introduced the, the ability to share Apple IDs, which has been such a problem for a long time. 
now you can join together as a family. And so two people get married, they can share all their music and all their apps. Uh, you have kids, you can now set up certain accounts to approve or disapprove their purchasing of things. Oh, which is, which big, is wonderful, yeah. Oh, like yeah, so, so they're allowing you to link together only six, but that number is likely to go up as, as time goes by. But it's a really big deal and something people have been yelling at for a while. Everything else is kind of the stuff we've been waiting for and expecting. They're doing a better job now with notifications. So if it says Bob text messaged you, you can just click that and then immediately text message him back and not have to switch out of the app. Yeah. That's nice. That is nice. You know. That's a very nice. I like it. And, yeah. and I like the fact uh, that if you happen to have somebody on, um, on another operating system, like a, an Android device, um, you're, you're still going to be able to use iMessage on Yosemite. And it's it's also still going to to, to integrate well with the iPhone. I also yes. like the fact that um, that Apple has has integrated some of the uh, features from WhatsApp. WhatsApp is a uh, an audio and picture sharing text message uh, device and uh, or, or app on on the iPhone. And so, say uh, Kathleen, I wanted to send you uh, a little a little recording. You know, through text message, yeah. I can actually just hit record, record the text message, and send that as a text message to you. Hmm. And nice. so it's kind of like a voicemail type feature. Mm -hmm. And if you remember way back, Jeff, I think everybody had these. Maybe even in the TV and radio industry, you had them. Uh, Nextel had the push to talk thing. Right. Yeah. And and I think that's essentially what what this has kind of become. And I really like that idea. That is that's a real cool idea. I yeah. Like it too. Yeah, so as you say, Father, there's there's not a whole lot that's that's uh, that's incredibly incredibly groundbreaking, but there's a lot of new stuff here that that is kind of the direction that you thought it was going to go, and we're hoping right. That it and was. and and I should have to add that one more thing that they're building in widgets. Yeah, now, it's not widgets on the desktop, but it's wish it, widgets in the notification center of your iPhone. But that's a really really big issue for some people like me who just want to know that I can get to my Google Keep or I can get to what my stock prices are doing, that's a helpful thing to know. Uh, the other two things, Father, we need to add is that they've introduced a system called Health. Yes. Which allows you basically, allows a third-party developers like Nike, Power Man, and stuff like that to build to an API so that if I've got a Fitbit scale and I've got my Fitbit tracker and I've got a Nike fuel band and I've got that Nike thing in my shoe, but I'm also using RunKeeper, Mm -hmm. All of those things together we'll talk. can send their data to health, and health wow. will bring all your health stuff into one place. Nice. nice. And nice, they're doing nice. something exactly the same thing with home automation, where hopefully they're going to get Nest on board and others, so that if you have a drop cam providing security at your house, and you have a Nest device, and you have another device that's doing your, um, you know, maybe turning your lights on and off, like an X11 device or something, all of those things now can talk in one place and both of those things health and home automation are fully siri integrated and and uh, how much jeff would you expect to pay for these <laughs> upgrades oh heavens I, I can't even imagine but i i um i don't think it would be very cheap <laughs> you'd imagine it would be a lot right i do yeah. what if i I'd, told you jeff what <laughs> that all of this were available not for 100 dollars, not for 50 dollars, uh -huh. but absolutely free that's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> You're that's right. Not it's amazing. All. There's more. <laughs> that's right. But that, uh, uh, that's but, incredible. And, two and that's, copies. <laughs> two copies for, for, for the free. <laughs> <laughs> Plus shipping and handling. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no it, COD. It's funny how how even um, the delivery of software has changed. Whenever whenever iOS, uh, uh, rather whenever OS 10 first came out, you had to go and buy the CD. Now with mm. um, with Mac. Uh, being what it is now with the app center and everything you just you download it it's just, uh, and yeah. it is cool even now uh, I, I have i just recently upgraded i had my iphone 4 for about three years upgraded to an iphone 5 and and father ryan i really debated i mean i was so tempted to go the uh, the galaxy or the samsung route uh but i decided to stick with it because of my apps and contacts and all that stuff and i didn't want to have to think about it but the other night i downloaded a real-time analyzer app because i do the the audio thing and um, it's surprisingly, I downloaded it to the uh, iPad, and uh, just like with a couple of minutes later, I go to pick up my iPhone, and it's already on my iPhone too. So um, uh, yeah, I, I like that. 
No, I do too. And I'm, I, as I said at the beginning, I'm seriously thinking about going back because the biggest reason I left is because the keyboard, I had, I just fell in love with keyboards on Android and could not stand the idea of having to continue to tap. Also, we need to add that the iPhone 8, 6, I was reading rumors about the iPhone 6. Mm -hmm. September, a new 4.7-inch iPhone is supposed to come out. That's exactly the same size as the latest Samsung Galaxy. Oh, 4.7 so inches. The yeah. Samsung Graham Cracker. Cra cra <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Graham Cracker. <laughs> and, and the... Uh, what do you do with that audio? I don't know. <laughs> Keep going. Now. <laughs> the, the, uh, and they're also introducing a second size. They're going to release the iPhone 6S right away. And it's going to be 5.5 inches, which is the size of the Galaxy Note. Oh. And so that covers all my bases. I can have the keyboard I want. I can have all the cool interactivity I want. I can have widgets, and I can have the screen size I want. That covers my basis. So I may have to wait until March or April next year, but I'm pretty much going to go back to iPhone after that, which is oh, great. By the way, let me interrupt uh, Father yeah, uh, yeah. Father Chris. Uh, in celebration of uh, Pentecost, uh, you did uh, kind of, for, for our listeners, turn a, a shade of red over there. Yeah, with my glossolalia. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Carry on, gentlemen. <laughs> you must talk in tongues. <laughs> yeah. Good for talking in the tongues. So, uh, yeah, so I, I like this, too, because I wonder if maybe it means that Apple isn't kind of breaking out of some of their um, we-know-what-you-need kind of thing. Yeah, that, that would definitely seem to be the case. Unfortunately, you're still stuck. They're, they're not skinning their system. You're yeah. still stuck with whatever Johnny Ive thinks is cool. Which So they're, they're rebranding. They're redoing all the graphics for iPhone, for iOS. And so whatever you've gotten used to, Stop being used to them. <laughs> it's right, all gonna, new. Gonna change. And it's going to keep changing every year, according to whatever Johnny Ive thinks is good. Kathleen, you're probably still going to be a PC user, but with your iPhone, right? Yeah, I haven't made the, the computer leap to Apple, uh -huh. but um, I am a diehard iPhone user. Yeah. So my question, is, uh, the school where you are mm -hmm. going, I, I uh, St. Michael's, <laughs> I St. Michael's, I, I. Are, are they a Mac school? No. No? Neither one of None of our high schools here in, in Baton Rouge are, are um, I schools. I schools. Yeah. However, there are a few in New Orleans who are using um, yeah. what those things called. iPads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, those things. Yeah. I'm Duck glad one. I understand, you know, <laughs> what this is. Not, you know, yeah. Minority small, report. Thing. Small groups of, of kittens. That's yeah, right. Uh -huh. Small kittens petting. Do you know what a group of kittens is called, Father? No, what? A Kindle. Oh, a Kindle I have kitten. one of those. Oh. No, you don't. I do. You it's have like, like a you have a you have a slurp of French bulldogs. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. Yeah. You know what a group of cats is called? Well, well no, a clouder. A clouder of cats. And no, it's yes. a, a it's kindle a, of kittens and a clouder of cats. A murder of crows and a gaggle right. of reporters. That's right. Yeah, we always wondered what seminarian should be called. Uh huh. I yeah. usually go with herd. Yeah. We usually just yeah you know, yeah they do move in herds or right. a mess <laughs> a mess of yeah. gallimimus mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they do move in messes yeah I, I think it would be a blessing of priests uh, no. sometimes <laughs> you do it right I don't know so a bother of priests <laughs> <laughs> yes yes. Yes. And an anxiety of bishops. <laughs> That's horrible. Oh, no. So, speaking of anxiety, you've got all this stuff with uh, with iOS and certainly with uh, with Yosemite. You've got to program it, and this is this is a, a new area as well because not only are they reintroducing the, the the front end that we see, but they're also developing the back end with a new programming language. Right? I know nothing about this other than. Um, it is not. It is never, ever, ever getting back together with iOS seven. <laughs> yes, they. The new program is called, is called Swift. Swift. Oh, you see what man. I did there? Yes, I like that. I and uh, this that. is only interesting to nerds. So this is like a level seventeen nerd alert. But yeah. um, for those not in the know, iOS and OS ten have been written in a language called Objective C or C sharp for the last many years. That language was, was brought with Steve Jobs when he left his company Next Step, which is the company he founded when he was kicked out of Apple. And it's been the official language of, of Apple. It's called Carbon or Cocoa. It's actually called Cocoa on the OS X, but it's been Objective-C. The new language is Butamus. 
It is very, very Ruby-like for those who know what that means. It's compiled, but it's also simple enough so that the simulator can run it like an interpretive language in real time. Put that in your nerd pipe and smoke it. <laughs> uh, the best practice is still object-oriented, but it has plenty of room for scoped standalone functions. And its main purpose, I mean, honestly, is to glue together all the APIs. So Apple has all these magical tools called APIs, application interface. And and so the app, this app, this API knows how to use the camera. This API knows how to use the gravity uh, features. This API knows how to use location. And all you've got to do is use this language to say, go and tell the camera to get the picture and then tell the location thing to geotag it and then tell the, the screen to shoot out the image. So, I mean, you're not really, you're not really inventing the wheel. You're more just duct taping together all the hundreds of great APIs that Apple has already created. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the real money quote from this comes from Steve Jobs, where he said, the way you get a programmer productivity, produ the way you get programmer productivity is not by increasing the line of code per programmer per day, which is the old mm -hmm. way of thinking. That doesn't work. The way you get programmer productivity is by eliminating lines of code you have to write. Right. And so the line of code that is the fastest to write, that never breaks, it never needs maintenance, is the line you never have to write in the first place. And so what Swift does is throw away everything you don't really need. And so if you don't really need to type it, you can't screw it up, even me. And so it's a really, really exciting language. Most people, as I said, don't care, but this is a gigantic big deal for uh, for nerds, and it's going to make it really easier to write uh write programs of all sorts. And I like this idea very much because uh, I've used uh, um, the programming language a little bit uh, that's based on, I guess, Objective-C. Uh, whenever I was building graphics for um, our, our old video editing software, you, oh, have, yeah. you have all these little nodes and the nodes have options and you just connect them together and, and then eventually you get a, a little uh, a function that would, that would spit out and do something with, with images. And so it sounds to me like they're kind of developing further this notion of just making it really, really, really easy. But there could be an inherent danger with, uh, with that, right? Yeah, I mean, if you remember the 90s when the infamous program Print Shop Plus showed oh, up. Oh, a moment of silence for those who use Print Shop Plus. I, oh. This is what opened up desktop publishing and, dare I say it, comic sans to the common man. <laughs> And don't forget clip art, Father. Let's not. Let's Still not. Still alive clip art. and well in bulletins around this country. It's true. Burning the eyes of at least me. And the souls of Catholics everywhere. Yeah. Oh, I feel pretty strongly about clip art. <laughs> I actually well, I rate, make my own. It, anyway, continue. People who will remember that, remember that in the 90s, b before the 90s, if you wanted something printed, you either drew it with a crayon or you went to a professional who designed it and did it on an offset press. Mm -hmm. Then the 90s showed up, and now everybody with a dot matrix printer had a welcome home grandma banner. Uh, <laughs> Even if they, they didn't have a grandmother. Spent an hour tearing <laughs> off the little edges of the paper. Um, yeah. This new language is going to make writing iPhone and iPad apps as easy as desktop publishing was in the 90s, which right. means we're going to get mountains of useless, terrible apps, yeah. not just by people looking to troll the app store and make money, but by every 9- and 10-year-old who's been assigned to do something interesting by his teacher in class. Oh, oh yeah. And so until the, the stores do a better job of curating what's actually good and what's junk, yeah. we're going to be seeing more and more and more stinky apps. Um <laughs> that are going to flood the app store. Uh, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just something we're going to have to be on the lookout for. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, Apple still curates more or less by hand in the app store, correct? Yeah, they have a duck named named Thomas. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Thomas the duck is a curator. He has a little monocle. Yeah, well, they, they originally tried to hire the squirrels from Willy Wonka, but oh, it yeah. turns out, <laughs> as Veruca Salt learned, you can't get them. They're <laughs> not for sale. No. Mm. And so they had to opt for ducks. The geese also unavailable for programming. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, squirrels and geese. Yeah, all of them out. Yeah, uh, you're thinking of the, the newer version of the, the newer, Charlie more disturbing the chocolate version. factory. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I prefer the more uh, uh, lightly scented film noir that was Gene Wilder's <laughs> yeah. Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory. Well, all those animals were unavailable for comment. That's right. Exactly. So, uh, so yes, uh, Matt Hartle in the chat room says, customer reviews to the rescue. That's really 
on my Android device, that's what keeps me from uh, from going crazy is saying, oh, yeah, well, at least there are some customer reviews that say, do not download this. It will not give you television from around the world. <laughs> it will Which not is what make they all golden say. eggs. Don't buy it. It's true. That's right. Uh, David says in the chat room, says, I'm pretty sure everyone has a grandma, maybe in the next world, but they have them. I don't know about that. I think that perhaps Jeff was decanted. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? You, you, you said that in public. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want you to know. <sighs> well, you know one thing. We actually were decanted. Oh my! You've done it. You've managed to uh, plug something into your ears, or if you're watching on the video feed, and it's Catholic Underground. It's your weekly Catholic guide to the digital continent. We're always available on CatholicUnderground.tv or CatholicUnderground.com, Facebook.com slash CatholicUnderground, Twitter.com slash CathUnderground. I'm Father Chris Decker. Joining me via Skype, we've got Father Ryan Humphreys. To my left, Kathleen Lee. To my front, Jeff Blackwell. To my over there, uh, Mary Kate Taylor and Tim. I don't know who is running video right now. It's Tim. Tim. Tim is still. This is I tell a fun you what, game. I, I have a I have a seminarian for the summer, and uh, and and Tim is actually uh, he has a little bit of, of experience with running video for Abbey Youth Festival mm-hmm. and for other things uh, like that. He even does video editing in his spare time. I tell you what, they know how to assign them, don't they? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Putting them through the paces. Ooh. Oh, yeah, and he's learning stuff about what it takes to be a priest, too. But, you know, I don't know. Father, would you say that, uh, that being on the digital continent is, uh, is kind of, is Tim getting good training by, by uh, shadowing me here to the Catholic Underground, do you think? I think it's valuable skills. I don't know if it's necessary priestly training, but I think it's incredibly valuable skills. Yeah. All of us need to be open to whatever God is directing us to, and that's what I said in my sermon today. So <laughs> there. Oh, yeah, exactly. Do that again. Right. You get two dings. Two dings, yes. That's yeah. delightful. That's a two That's right. ding ding. Although, you know, one of the things I've discovered about um, about priesthood and working in media mm. is that so many souls have, have come back to Christ, um, at least that I've been able to be witness to, just through the relationships that, that happen through Catholic radio, through Catholic television, through Catholic internet work. Um, certainly not, not because I'm amazing, but because the Lord can use the priest uh, in, in, in this way. So, yeah, I think uh, there may be a little tinge of, of uh, priestly importance to it. But, of course, I mean, you know, it's not, it's not the same thing as, as, uh, as sitting somebody down in your office and helping them through a tough time or whatever. But it is a place of meeting. So, Tim, hope you're taking notes. He is because he's running camera. So, uh, St. Anne's Church in San Diego, That's California. In California. Yeah, it is. Don't know. It's true. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, they have a the, the Bay Area NBC affiliate has great graphics. Uh, they are having a summer chant camp. Yes, they not, are. Not just any camp, a chant a camp. A chant camp. Yeah. You may be going to VBS, but these kids. <laughs> this is the next level. <laughs> these kids are <laughs> legit. Um, at St. Anne's, the kids are learning ancient Gregorian melodies, mm-hmm. and it's pretty awesome. You know, I have to say, Kathleen, I did not sing the Veni Creator Spiritus in Latin because I never, I never learned the chant, oh. and so I can't sight. I mean, I know it, but I can't sight read it, and so I would have gone as a child to a chant camp. I think you, yeah, and you would have enjoyed it. I totally would have. Maybe a little too much. Anyway, but for the chant. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, there's a video online. It's about a 15-minute video that we're going to put in the show notes, a link to it. It's pretty awesome because um, in 2008, St. Anne's, the parish, was um, exclusively devoted to the extraordinary form. Okay, so, so the, the, yeah, so the, the mass in, in, uh, in Latin. Yes, and so, you know, it's, it's incredible because in all these videos, these young girls are all wearing chapel veils, and it's beautiful. But um, about three years ago, they started this chant camp, and it talks in the video about how Pope Pius X, in his writing on uh, on his writings on sacred music, said there are three particular qualities for good sacred music in the liturgy. Mm-hmm. One first is sanctity; is it holy music? Two, beauty of form. Yeah, is it good to listen to? Yeah, right. Is it is it constructed well? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then three, um, which this this quality spontaneously arises when the first two are present, 
is universality. Mm -hmm. So can everyone sing it? And we all know we've been to a mass where there's like a solo, you know, and you're like, what the heck? I don't even, the words aren't even printed. Nobody knows what's going on. Um, and that is not universality. That is a solo in church. It's monoversality. And it's a, it's a solo no-no. That's what I have to say. So <laughs> um, in the video, uh, the staff of the, of the parish, especially the music director, Marianne Carr Wilson. Oh, she's got a hyphen. Yeah, yeah. She's got four names. That's Pretty important. Awesome. Um, she's found that the kids pick up the melodies really fast. Um, and so she's also found that language isn't really a barrier like it is for adults. Yeah. And so um, these kids are picking up this music. It's it's beautiful. It's, you know, when you when you really sit down with Gregorian chant, that's what it was made to be simple. You know, and, and when the many people don't realize that I think about Gregorian chant because when they think of Gregorian chant, they think of stuff they've heard on CDs. Yeah. That sound that are that are polyphonic. You mm -hmm. know, that have a lot of different voices, and they go, oh, there there's no way. There's no way I could even even imagine to, to start. And yet, mm -hmm. if you're learning the simple plain chant, it's very easy to do. Yeah. It's so it's it's very it's almost predictable. You you can kind of know where it's going next. Um, even for those people who are not musically inclined. Um in fact at the last two weekends I've been at um um ordinations, uh, mm -hmm. priestly ordinations, and um we've sang the Salve Regina, which is is, which I would sure. say is chant, huh? Yeah, the, it, it is. It's a, it's a plain chant of the Hail Holy Queen. Yeah, and it's beautiful, and it's easy. Um, so the question is, is this a workable model for our youth choirs? Yeah, I I, I would say that it could be, Father. Yeah, I mean, in terms of a of a summer camp, absolutely. It, it's it's entirely doable, and, and it's really not all that difficult. Now, you have to start saying, where does the youth choir happen? Because if you're talking about second, third, fourth, fifth grade, then this is ideal. If you're talking about sixth, seventh, eighth grade, that's when it starts to become where they, they want to see some practical application just psychologically. And unless they belong to a parish where they know this is going to be something that's an ordinary part of the faith life of the parish, it's going to be hard for them to find a place. In high school, by the time they get to high school, if they don't have any interest at all, it's unlikely they're going to want to devote time during the summer to it. So right. I think it would work very, very well as an elementary camp. And if your parish had a decent, you know, kind of chant-oriented program for, for one of the masses or more of the masses at, at Sunday, then you could make a play of it there for junior high. But I don't think it would really work for high school uh, without some kind of context and background. Very. very I, I like this idea quite a bit, though. And, and I think you're right, though, Father. You would have to build this in somehow, right? Yeah, I mean, you really do. Although I, I want to add, too, that I think this is, is, is a good thing, not just because it might be successful, you know, that's, that's fine and helpful, but unlike, you know, vacation Bible school songs or even praise band songs, you know, we call praise and worship music, the Gregorian melodies are really training the ear and they're training the voice. Yeah. And so whereas folk music and praise music encourage a kind of improvisational style, you yeah. know, on, on the instrument and in the voice, that is somewhat difficult to unlearn because I'm doing that now. Yeah. A kid who starts in high school or a college choir with a praise band background is going to struggle to switch that. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to have a, it's be a difficult time when you want to get away from improvisation where improvisation is not welcome in real music, real beautiful music. Whereas a kid with chant training could go the other way pretty easy. If you had real chant training, following into a folk genre or singing something praise music, that's very easy to do. And so I think a kid with chant training is probably going to end up doing better than a kid with folk training or, or, or I should say a kid with chant training is, and I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, it's good to have the chant training, if you, especially if you want to go toward more serious music down the road. That's right, uh, because the, the chant kind of lends itself towards a more classical understanding of music as a whole, uh, but also the theory of, of how music works. And, you know, you can get by, I mean, just because I grew up in a lot of the, the, um, the songs of the 80s uh, in, in church, where you, you don't really get a good understanding of how music works from them. You just know that they, they sound uh, kind of good. I mean, when I remember Father Sean fun. Duggan, we were trying to learn some piece of chant at seminary, and one of our guys had some kind of training in R&B. I Ugh. think it was Ernest. And, and he said, who is that? Who is that singing that silly running, that kind of blah, blah, blah stuff? Who are you? Oh, there you go. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. That's terrible. <laughs> That's right. That's right. He was a really talented vocalist. Yeah, you know? but he had to kind of slow him down. And but One of the things that I love about Gregorian chant, and I've probably said this before, uh, it was told to me 
that that whereas folk music uh, that that has worked its way into the liturgy, you know, especially in the eighties and nineties, mm. uh, follows the the human heartbeat, right? Four four time or three four time or something. It follows a beat, yeah. And and those beats are based upon an earthly rhythm, the human heartbeat, right? That's essentially how you how you keep the time. Gregorian chant melodies are based on a heavenly rhythm, and uh, and if you've ever heard it, if you've ever listened to it on a CD or perhaps in the liturgy. It, it does something different to you. It actually, because prayer is lifting the mind and heart to God, Gregorian chant has the ability to kind of lift you in kind of this otherworldly place. And so if you're teaching kids about that, yeah. then you're giving them uh, some, some music, uh, certainly some good music knowledge, but you're also beginning to teach them kind of a form of prayer. And, mm-hmm. and that, I think, could be very, very good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm on board with it. And you said it was um, a really neat video on uh, YouTube there, Kathleen. So uh, Yeah, we'll make sure we put that uh, in the show notes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, for the listeners who may not know, where are the show notes? The show notes, Father? as always, are if you go to <laughs> catholicunderground.com, which is our website, uh, you will find uh, on our website a, um, a, a listing of all of the latest shows. So that's right on the front page, right when you get there. And all you got to do is you click the latest episode, um, for example, episode number 265, and, uh, and that will take you to the episode page. And once you're at the episode page, you'll see the video feed from that particular week. You'll see the audio feed from that particular week. And then all of the show notes, all the things that we talked about, they will be there as well, as well as the ways to, uh, to follow all of the, the members of our Catholic Underground crew. So you that's, do it all. That's the way to do it, at catholicunderground.com, <laughs> and uh, we'll take care of the rest from there. All right. Well, you know, I, I guess the the show is kind of moving along so much so that it's time for the CU Pick of the Week. All right, uh, CU Pick of the Week time, and for our CU Pick of the Week, Kathleen. Here I am, <laughs> back with your weekly pick. start off yeah. pick of the week. Um, and so this is this one's for the ladies, guys. I mean, cheese knives were great. But this one is for the ladies. <laughs> this, is, um, this is for this is just for them. Cheese yeah. knives for everybody. It's universal. Yeah, I but mean, if you if you would like to, I don't know. You, maybe you're buying. Maybe you're buying for yeah. a lady in your life. Um, if you are out there and you are looking at what is for sale for us to wear as women, you like me, um, are going to be somewhat, hopefully, somewhat disappointed in the length of things that you wear. Um, and if modesty is what you're looking for, it's hard to find um, these days. And so mm-hmm. I want to tell you about a, uh, a clothing store called Down East Basics. Down East Basics. And they're, um, they're from, the, from the get-go, they wanted to make comfortable, trendy, modest clothing for women. Um, and, I, and I found out about it when I was in Colorado um, and and um, had met some some Mormon friends, uh-huh. and she she was dressed so cute, and I was like, "Where did you get all these things?" And she said, "Well, let me tell you about Down East Basics." Yeah. Now, it's it's in a couple of different places across the United States. Unfortunately, it's not here in Louisiana, mm-hmm. but you can go online um, to their website. I've actually put um, a link to their actual website where you can shop, um, and a, a little article that talks about what the purpose of down east uh was made for um trendy clothing especially now if you're looking for that bathing suit and you can't find one that you would you know actually wear in public mm-hmm. um they have a a beautiful a very beautiful line of modest swimsuits and so yeah they're all kind of they're one pieces yeah but they're they're very tasteful mm-hmm. very yeah. and and uh and as a guy can say this they're beautiful yeah. they're you know they are yeah right. and so so my question to you dear listeners is email us and yeah. tell us where are some other places, because I know there's a lot of other modest um, clothing lines out there. So if you know of one, please email us. Um, you can email me at Kathleen at... CatholicUnderground.com. CatholicUnderground.com. Or backchat at CatholicUnderground.com if, if you so desire. Yeah, because I know that you guys are looking for, for some modest clothing as well as I am. That's right. Yeah, and, and it always seems like that comes up, uh, for example, like at a, at a wedding. Well, Father, I didn't have yeah. anything modest to wear. And, you know, having walked by some of the bridal shops, yeah, I tend to agree with them. It's hard. Uh, yeah, it's hard to find something. Yeah. Especially, I'm guessing, something that's that's attractive. Yeah. 
Yeah, you don't. You, we we always tend to. If you're looking for modest, it always comes with shoulder pads and and you know. <laughs> The, yeah, the, the hair from the 80s. Yeah, the 80s good. April O'Neil yeah, from the Ninja Turtles. Look. You end up looking like your grandma, <laughs> which, I mean, no offense. They, no. Are, they are very modest ladies most of the time. That's right. So Yeah. I, I, I like this idea, too, because uh, just like chant mm-hmm. is, is a marriage of, of, of beauty and form, right. uh, clothing can do that as well. Yeah. You know, clothing can actually help a person to, to appear beautiful. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, it, just, it helps the transcendentals come out right there, Father Ryan. Indeed, it does. Yes, <laughs> See, very like nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of transcendentals, Jeff Blackwell, you have big of the week, and it's a it's it's a big one, all right. Honorific abilitudinitatibus. Yeah, I. That's a long word. Let's hear it again. Honorific abilitudinitatibus. And my, my wife found this, I don't know, when she was goofing around, and she said, look, uh, I found this, um, uh, our, uh, it was a uh, YouTube pronunciation of the longest Latin word, I, I think, in the world. Mm-hmm. And I come to find out, and I just think it's just neat because it's a, um, it's a long word and got a lot of syllables. I haven't counted the, uh, the syllables, but... Um, and I actually translated it properly, I want he you to did, know. Father Chris did. Uh, yeah. And uh, so there's a link, uh, uh, Wikipedia link in the show notes. Uh, it lives, gives you a little more in- info about this word, but it was actually used in one of the Shakespeare plays, uh, Love's Labor's Lost. So yeah. I just thought it was fascinating. Um, want to hear it again? Yeah, sure. Honorific abilitudinitatibus. So, so basically, it means somebody that is in a state of being able to achieve honors. Yes, or worthy of honor. Yeah, actually, not not somebody, uh, some bodies. It's or, plural. Yeah, plural. Uh, ah, yeah, ibus, right? Yeah, that's right. Dative plural, if I'm not mistaken. So there it is. That was just fun. It was my yeah. pick of the week. What we it, was, would, it was cheap, by the way. Ablative plural, I think. Right. Well, isn't it both? Oh, ibus it is. is it's both. Uh-oh. Oh, Uh-oh. yeah, the Wikipedia says it is both dative and ablative plural. We're both right. Yay! <laughs> Man, that's three geek alerts in one episode. What are we doing? Huzzah. Yeah. yeah, what we would do in the seminary is, um, is, is we would just put everybody's name in the ablative or dative plural for fun. So you'd be like mm. Jeffy Boos. <laughs> okay. It makes it funny. I would be Deckery a- Boos because they really rarely called me by my first name. Yeah. Oh. Kathleen Booth. I don't like that one. How about Kathleen Abunt? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I like that one either. Kathleen Toss. Okay, that's it. <laughs> you like that Bob, you could do Bobbies. Kathleen Bobbies. Kathleen Bobbies. I don't like bus being at the end of my name. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly don't want it in front of your name. I like you. I don't I don't know. Yikes. Well, Jeff, thank you for that um for that short Latin lesson. Oh, well. No, there we go. No. Um, Father Ryan, do you have your pick of the week lined up and ready to go? Mine is a simple little uh, little app on the iPhone, or rather on the, the Macintosh desktop side, desktop laptop, called airmail.app. The new OS X Yosemite is going to replace mail.app with a, a, a kind of a fully featured, very, very nice thing. I love airmail because it is simple. It's everything that uh, that I need in an, in an, in an a mail client. It's quick. It's very, very easy to use, and it has a lot of keyboard shortcuts. It is not bogged down by all the other nonsense that mail includes. And so uh, airmail.app is the one for me. I think it's like 10 bucks. It's really worth it, especially if you're a power user on Mac. It is a, a no-brainer. And it took it picks up where Sparrow left off, if that helps. So great oh, little app good, yeah. and definitely worth checking out. The link's in the show notes. In fact, I use airmail as well, but the, I don't know why. I don't use all the keyboard shortcuts. Maybe I need to start looking them up. There's a lot of good ones. My favorite is in replying. It's butterfly E, and uh-huh. it does an inline reply. So it doesn't open a new window. It just puts up a little box at the top. You type, and it goes away. Oh. And there's a send an archive button. It supports send an archive as well. I'm going to look up those nice. keyboard shortcuts because yeah. I like that. Yeah. My, uh, my pick of the week is, oh, here, are you ready? <laughs> I did them all at once. Sorry. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> My pick of the week, do I don't know, I'm pretty amazing, um, is is a collection of maps and diagrams in the comic book world. So it's called comic book cartography. So you know how sometimes in comic books they have to tell you where you are. They, they have to give you a, a pretty clear understanding of, of what the world looks like. And, uh, and so 
this is a collection of all of those comic books uh, pages, these kind of center spreads that give you establishing maps of, uh, of things happening in the comic book world. For example, the Bat Cave. You always wonder what the Bat Cave looked like. Well, it's in there. In fact, there's even a giant penny in the Bat Cave. I'm not really sure why. Uh, but huh. uh, but uh, the Avengers Mansion, for example. You, you might need that. You never know. Um, it's, it's all there. And uh, even even planets, entire planets. So so um, if you ever have wondered about some of these things, Jeff, you can actually find it on, on comic book cartography. For example, the Nick Fury tunnel cutaway of how Nick Fury gets into the Hydra building to uh, to take him down. Now, I've outer. often wondered about that. A sleepless what nights, you, as a matter of fact, do. a couple of times. I, yeah. yeah. I mean, who hasn't wondered about this? Uh, <laughs> I mean, they have a decoy ship, Jeff. A decoy ship. No way! It's a toy boat. Oh. Toy boat. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's my pick of the week uh, right. as, as well. So there, there you go. That's, um, that's, that's my pick. Do you have a pick of the week? Let us know. Backchat at catholicunderground.com is, is the best way to do it. Um, uh, David Pearson in the chat room says that my uh, pick of the week is a bit too Sheldony for him. Oh, I don't. Know. Well, it is. It is pretty geekish. I'm. I'm not. Yeah. So. Uh, so yeah. That's 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 good. Backchat at CatholicUnderground.com. Oh, Jeff. You know we have so many that uh, that listen to us. Mm-hmm. We have so many that that now are watching us, and and we we certainly thank you. And there's a way, maybe if you're listening to the show for, for the first time or the first time in a while, that, that you can help us out. Yes. Uh, uh, so jump on. Actually, I, I was going to say portions of the Catholic Underground are brought to you by you uh, because you, uh, you know, keep us alive with your donations, no matter how big, how small, catholicunderground.com. And also portions of Catholic Underground are brought to you by audibletrial.com yep. slash Catholic Underground. That's audibletrial.com slash Catholic Underground. And if I can take this moment uh, just to let you know, uh, if you if you are considering donating to CatholicUnderground.com, we finally upgraded our our donate form, so it's a lot easier for you to do that. Uh, it used to be you had to do a little uh, little gymnastics. You don't have to do that anymore. CatholicUnderground.com slash donate is uh, is the place to go. All righty, if you want the show notes that accompany this episode uh, and the podcast, you want to find out more about our apostolate, you can do that. CatholicUnderground.com is the way to do it. Uh, Father Ryan's church is online at minorbasilica.org. He's at FR Humphreys on Twitter. Thank you, Father Ryan, for for being here. It's been my pleasure. Jeff Blackwell is the tech director of the CU. He's the ruling despot at the Blackwell Communications Group. Jeff Blackwell. Dot us and at Jeff Blackwell us. Good to be here, Father. It's less than a minute now. Kathleen Lee is our faith ninja. She's at Kathleen Y A B R. Thank you, Kathleen. Anytime. Uh, Mary Kate Taylor and Tim are evangelists in their spare time. They run a nickel package against the shotgun offense. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for tuning in and hanging out with us on the digital continent. I'm Father Chris Decker. You can follow me at Digital Catholic. We, my friends, are Catholic Underground. Now you know. Oh, we're Faith Gone Digital. We'll see you next time.